These are two terms that students often get confused, enthalpy and entropy. So here in this Tobacco University video, I'm going to go through and give you a comparison of them. As a quick reminder, enthalpy has to do with energy in a system and entropy has to do with organization of that system. So hopefully we can get, dive into a little more detail so you can be able to distinguish the difference between these two similar sounding words. All right, let's get into the, the comparison between enthalpy and entropy. So as I said in the intro there, um, they sound similar, but very different meanings. Enthalpy deals with energy, heat content, more relevant in chemical reactions, such as bonded changes. We're looking at where is that, you know, heat energy in this example going to where entropy deals with disorder. Energy dispersal key for understanding phase changes and the direction of spontaneous processes. So enthalpy, again, the energy movement, entropy, that degree of organization. How well is everything organized? The more organized it is, it's got a lower entropy, and the more random it is, the higher degree of entropy. And temperature does have an impact on that. So let's get into enthalpy first in a little bit more detail, represented by the variable H. And enthalpy is a thermodynamic uh, property of a system defined as total heat content. It's often used to quantify the heat content of a system during a process at a constant pressure, and it's related to the stability of chemical bonds in reactions. It does not account for the disorder or randomness of a system. Keep in mind that the disorder and randomness, that is entropy. And enthalpy you can see in this equation, um, here we're looking at that total thermodynamic property of a total system here. V is representing volume, P is representing uh, pressure there, and the heat supplied as internal energy is represented by U. We put all of these together, that's how we're able to calculate our enthalpy. Now enthalpy formula, as I just briefly went over there and kind of showed in that little quick pictorial, it's the sum of the system's internal energy, referred to as U, and the, and the product of its pressure, P, and its volume, V, as expressed as H equals U plus P, V. H is enthalpy typically measured in either the unit's joules or kilojoules. U is the internal energy, essentially the energy associated with the random motion of the molecules. In most chemical equations, P equals pressure and V equals volume. All right, so when we're looking at changes in enthalpy, uh, remember the delta H does mean change in. This indicates the heat absorbed or released during a process at a constant pressure. So we have two scenarios, exothermic and endothermic. Exothermic is going to be heat's going to be released like in combustion. When that occurs, the delta H or the enthalpy is less than zero. Essentially, it's negative. So if delta H is negative, that means heat's being released. Think of combustion. In the opposite, endothermic, where heat is being absorbed, that's where delta H or the enthalpy is going to be a positive number. That's going to be indication when like ice is melting. So keep in mind when we have a positive or negative, that can tell us whether we're releasing heat if it's negative, or heat is being absorbed if enthalpy is positive. Now enthalpy example here, again, here's that quick little uh, formula, H equals U plus PV. Fairly simple if you understand what the variables stand for. Now looking at, in contrast, looking at now our entropy, represented by the letter S. This is a measure of the disorder or randomness of a system, reflecting the number of possible microscopic arrangements of particles. If quantities, uh, it quantifies how spread out or dispersed energy is within a system. It does not directly measure heat content, but does relate to energy dispersal. And as you remember, things are very organized and orderly, as we see here on the left of both of these images, that is a very low entropy and a very low disorder. We add heat or we add temperature, for example, to this and in the warmer environment, the uh, disorder is increasing. Uh, we're also increasing our entropy. And the formula for entropy is slightly different here where delta S, which is change in entropy of a system, is a change uh, in that entropy is measured in uh, joules uh, per Kelvin. Uh, the Q with a subscript RV, in this case just Q, is the heat transferred in a reversible process, and that's measured in the heat unit joules. And T is the absolute temperature measured in Kelvin. So again, here we see that entropy equation, delta S, or the change in entropy, equals the heat exchange in the system divided by the absolute temperature of a system. That's where the temperature unit Kelvin becomes important, and being able to convert to that unit is also equally important. Now changes in our delta S are our um, entropy. 
indicates whether a process increases or decreases the disorder in a system. A positive uh, entropy means there's increasing disorder, such as a gas expanding. You can see here on the right. A negative delta S or a negative entropy is a decrease in disorder. As we move to the left here, it's gas condensing into a liquid as an example. So when ice melts, when water goes from a solid to a liquid, the entropy is increasing, means greater than zero, because the liquid state is more disorganized than the solid state. So this gives a little clarification between these two terms that may sound familiar, but as we can see here, stand for very different aspects.